Now, if I want to find out, if I want to show that M bisects PR and M bisects QS as well, then one of the ways I could do that is by proving that PM is equal to MR. That would be those lengths being equal. Do you agree? And at the same time, I could, well not at the same time, afterwards, I would then prove that, what have I got down the bottom? <coughs> That's QM equals MS. That would do the job, wouldn't it? Okay. But boy, that would be a pain. So I want to tell me why choosing this part through the question would be a grand pain. Any takers? What do you reckon? Where, where is M? Where is M? What is the definition of M? It's the, um, <coughs> it's the point of intersection of these two diagonals, right? It's the point of intersection of these two diagonals. I don't know it's in the middle yet. I, that's what I'm supposed to prove. Do you agree that? Right? So even though I'm looking at it and I'm even calling it a name that suggests it's right in the middle, I can't assume that that is the case. So I have to show that where these points, where these intervals intersect, is that point. How do I find where two lines intersect? What's my normal way of doing that? I'm going to have to solve something simultaneously. What am I going to have to solve simultaneously? Yeah, Eric. The equation of the two Yeah, you're going to need to know this equation, right? Then you need to know this equation and then you solve simultaneously. Put your hand up if you want to do that, right? Firstly, I don't even know what this equation is. How am I going to find it? I've got these two points, right? So which form of uh, the equation of a line should I use if I've got two points? I, I would probably choose two point form because I have two points, right? I'm going to have to do the same thing here. And then once I've got those equations, which by the way, look like they're going to be disastrous. Once I've got those two equations, then I'm going to have to solve simultaneously. Uh, my head hurts just thinking about it. Okay, look, you've got so many different problems flying around, uh, eight of them. This is just going to be a disaster. It will still work. You can get to here, and it will be true, but it's a very inefficient way to go through it. Does that make sense? So what's a better way? What's a better way? This point here, I'm alleging it's the midpoint of PR. That's what I'm alleging, right? If it's also the bisector of this interval here, this diagonal, then it should be the midpoint of this set of coordinates as well, right? <coughs> How do I show that they're the same? What is the midpoint of PR? The midpoint of PR. What is it? Now, I keep going towards this, right? I love midpoints because midpoints are so easy to work out, right? As compared to equations of lines, as opposed to distances. These are all hard to work out, but midpoints, you can just sort of state them, right? Have a look. Look at the coordinates. Can you just state the formula for me? What would it look like in this case? It's going to be this coordinate and this coordinate. I've got to add them, right? x1 plus x2 on 2 plus what? x3 plus x4. Is that right? Also on 2. You've added them and then you divide. So I've taken the average, right? Have a look at the y coordinates. The y coordinates are going to be exactly the same, aren't they? y1 plus y2, y3 plus y4, and then i. Now, admittedly, that looks messy. I would actually say it just looks long. It's not messy at all. It's not complicated. What happens when you add these two fractions? They even have the same denominator. So what's going to happen? The numerators are just going to combine together. Now, both of these are over 2, but then you're subsequently going to divide by 2. So what's the new denominator? Yep. The y's are exactly the same. You almost don't even have to think. This is one of the nice things about midpoints. Can I simplify this any further? You can't. You don't know anything about x1, x2, x3, x4, etc. That's, that's done. Okay. This is the midpoint of PR. Now just look. Look at the other diagonal. What's it called again? QS. QS. Do I even need to go about the next line? Have a look at the things you're going to be adding together. Right? Instead of x1, x2, then x3, x4, you have the same pieces, they just appear in a different order. Do you see that? Right? There's x1, x4, there's x2, x3. 
I'm going to just write out exactly the same word and we'll end up with the same thing, right? Which I'll let you to do to show that the midpoint of PR is indeed the midpoint of QS. So, if you've got two intervals and their midpoints are the same place, right? Therefore, PR and QS, what was that phrase I had before? What do they do to each other? They, they mutually bisect, right? And you don't need to fuss around with any gradients or distances anymore. That's it. Therefore, PQRS is, it has to be a parallelogram. Because this property here of diag diagonals mutually bisecting is a property that only parallelograms have, which is why subsequently rectangles have them. Rhombuses have them and squares have them because they're all just fancy versions of parallelograms. Does that make sense? Diagonals mutually bisect. Okay. So, what's our conclusion? <coughs> if you didn't have coordinates on here, how would you even do this? Uh, now, one of my other favorite ways to prove this is using something called vectors. Unfortunately, at this point, you guys don't know what vectors are. Some of you might have heard of them. Uh, they're just things that indicate distance and also direction. Uh, the vector proof for this is particularly elegant, but because we don't have access to those tools yet, this is pretty good, right? There are other ways to do it. You can also make, uh, you can also draw conclusions from like parallel lines because there are so many of them and similar triangles, but I'm not gonna go there because that also takes its own amount of time. But there you go. This is the use of quarter geometry tools to do deductive geometry proofs. Usually those are two separate things, right? You know how if you get asked, oh, show that. Show that this triangle here, let's give it a name, A, B, C, is similar to this triangle over here, A, X, Y. You don't, you're not used to seeing coordinates or something like this, right? But that's what we're sort of moving into now. It's all the same tools that you've used before, thinking about a parallelogram, thinking about its properties and how to go about that, but through the lens of coordinate geometry, okay, and straight lines and their functions.